Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawtonen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. Today, we're going to take a look at the crop tool inside of Lightroom, but first, make sure you check out all of the free resources available on our website. I made a few quick adjustments to this photo. Let's take a look at the overall before and after, and I think that looks great. And really, all I did was apply my favorite preset. I have it on the Flourish Academy. The link is below. But today, let's explore the crop tool by pressing R on the keyboard. Now there's a few things I'd like to talk to you about in regards to this tool. One is you can change the aspect ratio of your crop by selecting it here. However, I would recommend always cropping to the original aspect ratio so that you do not confuse yourself or clients. Yes, if these are cropped to the eight by 10 or four by five ratio, you will lose some of the image, but I like to do that at the lab level, not at the edit level. Another important thing to note is that if this lock is unselected, then you can start doing some really wacky things to this crop, which that might be great if you were creating a bookmark or something, but you generally would not want to crop to a ratio that's outside of the original. I'm going to hit escape in order to remove that and then just R again in order to grab the tool. But I always want to make sure that this lock is checked to the original aspect ratio. While you are using the tool, you can press O on your keyboard multiple times in order to reveal different overlay patterns that help you understand more about composition with photography. For instance, this is really handy if you want to see what would happen if someone were to order this image in a 4x5 or 5x7. Remember, 4x5 is the same ratio as 8x10. So what we can see here are the edges that we would lose if the client opted to order this as an 8x10. Now in this case, we're good. Everything that's important is inside of that area, but that's not always the case. And you'll just have to look at your images on a case by case basis. I typically have my overlay set to this grid just so I can see that things are lined up. And if I decided I wanted to crop this image further, I could just click in a corner and drag down, place my cursor inside of the image and move it around. Now the nice thing about this tool, as with all tools inside of Lightroom, is that it's non-destructive. If I crop this image, say here, I would press enter, or return to commit that crop. But if I decided later that I didn't like it, I could press R again, and I still have that entire image to work with. You can also change the angle or rotate this a little bit, depending on how you would like it to appear. But one last thing I wanna make a really important note about is regarding the amount of the photo that you choose to crop. It's probably not a good idea to take a photo like this and pull the crop down to here and say, oh, I'm just gonna get some headshots of them right here with this crop. Because what's happening is you are getting rid of all of that other data and pixels, and this image will suffer tremendously at the print level. There simply is not enough data to make this an enlargement. Yeah, you could probably print this as a wallet. <laughs> I just would not recommend cropping this far on an image. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, okay, what is an acceptable amount of cropping? It really depends on the camera. It depends on how many pixels and how much data you have to work with. Full frame, newer cameras can withstand more cropping than an older cropped sensor camera. In general, okay, that's a lot of technical data, but in general, I wouldn't wanna crop more than about 10, maybe 15% of the image. I wouldn't crop more than this on this particular photograph. And I just wanted you to be aware that if you crop further, you could be impacting the quality at the print level. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.